Hello everyone and welcome to Mike's Mopar Garage. Uh, we're in the shop today and we're going to start a project uh, that I've been uh, just dying to get going here. It's been just uh, stuff being getting in the way. But we're going to be working on my car, my 68 Charger. Uh, as many of you know, a while back I had a fire in the wiring harness right at the bulkhead connector. And I even made a video of uh, replacing the dash harness and stuff. So. Uh, since I knew I was going to have to take on that project, I decided that I was going to go ahead and do a lot of upgrades to the car that, uh, that I needed to make ever since I restored it in, uh, in 01. Uh, when I restored it in 01, uh, it was the first car I'd ever restored. I tried to restore it back to uh, somewhat factory uh, original looking and original uh, condition, uh, but I changed a few things. And one of them was the brakes. So it originally had... Um, drum brakes all the way around. So I decided obviously like a lot of people do is to do a disc brake conversion. So back in 01 our options were a little limited. There were some kits out there but they were pretty expensive and after doing a lot of research I decided to go with um, a conversion using some OEM parts from other cars and the ch cars that I chose was the mid 80s range cars like the Diplomats and so forth like that and I actually found out that a uh, Chrysler 5th Avenue uh, the front end brakes were compatible as well. So that's what I did with this car. I put the spindles and the disc brake um, rotors and, and calipers and stuff off an 85 Fifth Avenue. And they bolted up correctly. Um, as many of you probably already know, the actual ball joint end of the spindle, I should say, is actually just slightly taller. It's about a quarter inch taller than the original, um, uh, original uh, 68 uh, stock spindle. But it worked great and it actually helps improve the geometry a little bit and when they aligned it, it aligned perfect. And I've been driving it since and it drives phenomenal. So I've never had an issue with uh, doing that conversion. But uh, one of the things that I, I soon found out is that the um, brakes just didn't work as well as they should have. Uh, I didn't have the stopping power. They just didn't bind up and lock the brakes up like they should have. Um, I had uh, plenty of brake booster pressure, or I should say, brake vacuum um, but it just didn't work but then when I went and did a, a subsequent vacuum check of the car because of the camshaft I chose and stuff I was only running about 12 uh, uh, inches of vacuum which isn't a whole lot but still I just wasn't getting the performance out of the brakes that I thought I should so I even went as far as to install a uh, secondary vacuum booster I was drawing 22 inches of vacuum out the, at the booster and the brakes still were not working good. So I just was not very happy with it. So when I had this fire in the, um, in the wiring harness and I knew I was gonna take the dash out and I was gonna have to do a lot of stuff, I decided that I'm gonna just go ahead and tear the car apart down to the point where I can do a lot of the upgrades. And now today is the start of one of them and that is the brakes. So what I had is I had originally, I had drum brakes and I had this brake booster on there. So I decided, what the heck, since I have vacuum booster on there, I'll just go ahead and just convert it and put a disc uh, massive cylinder on there and the disc brakes. So this is what I ran for years. And I've just found out that it's just not the right booster for it as well. Um, it might not even been the right push rod length. So I'm finding out a lot of things that I probably did wrong back then that I'm gonna try to correct now. So what I've decided to do is go ahead and go with the correct booster. And this is a, the booster I'm going with. This is a 66 to 70 B body uh, brake booster to use with disc brakes in the front and drums in the back. Uh, I got this from Classic Industries, got it on sale, got a great deal and comes with the, mass, the matching uh, master cylinder with it. So this is what we're gonna be installing and I'm gonna show you the steps because there are a few things that we're gonna have to do to the car, um, such as this portion right here is a little bit bigger and we might have to, might have to round the hole out a little bit on the car. Uh, not a big to do, but um, we're going to be installing this. I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you the, um, the uh, proportion valve that I chose uh, for master power brakes. We're going to put that on there, and we're going to run some lines, and hopefully we're going to get this thing dialed in. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to try to show you as much as I can on video, a step-by-step -step of what I did, and um, hopefully in the end, it's going to work. So to get started, we've already taken the uh, mass cylinder off and the brake booster off and brake line. So now we're going to get to the point where we're going to have to uh, fit up the, uh, the new booster. So from what I've read and what I've been told, the, um, the push rod that goes through the firewall to the brake assembly, that, that the rod assembly and with the uh, rubber diaphragm on it, is slightly larger than this original one. So we're going to probably have to round out the hole just a little bit to get it to fit correctly. 
uh, it's not a tremendous big deal uh, massage a little bit and then we'll we'll dress up the uh, where we grind it out uh, keep it from rusting but uh, if that's what we got to do to get better brakes then so be it so this is the plate that we're going to take off so the brake booster goes in here and if you notice the holes pretty um, matches pretty well so the original booster would go through here um, and there's no really no obstruction so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this plate off because with the kit with the new booster a new plate comes because this hole is probably going to be too small anyway so we're going to go ahead and take this plate off right now all right so we got the plate off and this is the original plate that i just took off and this is the plate that comes with the kit so you're going to see if you match them up The new hole in the new plate is slightly larger than the than the uh, hole on the old plate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and match this up to the firewall, and we're going to go ahead and see how much we actually got to take out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and trace around on the car where this bracket needs to be uh, where it needs to be ground out, and then uh, we'll get a Dremel tool and, and grind this off. Okay, that should work. Now with the plate off, you can see uh, exactly where I'm going to have to grind. So what I'll do is I'll get a Dremel tool, a little carbide bit, and we'll go to work on that. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Alright, so I went ahead and enlarged the hole. As you'll see, I just went around it where the uh, marks were at. And took a, a rotary file actually in an air tool that I had uh, rather than a dribble and uh, the air tool uh, the air file worked uh, perfect so I just went around this area where the marks were at and then enlarged the hole now one thing I had to do that will might be a problem if anybody tries to do this with the with the dash already installed but if you can see right there that's the pedal assembly I had to actually move that back out of the way to just kind of make sure that I wasn't hitting that uh, that could be an issue if you're going to try to do this with everything in the car. I'm not really sure uh, But I just went ahead and moved it out of the way just in case um, I got a little close to these holes, but that doesn't matter because I'm not using those holes These outer holes are the ones that the uh, booster uh, bolts up to so these really don't really matter So I dress these up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put a little uh, um, Red oxide primer or something on these to dress that uh, that bare metal end up and uh, just to keep it from rusting out One thing I want to suggest is that if you, when you go to put this booster back on, put this bell crank assembly on first. Because when you go to put, after you put that booster in, it's almost impossible to get this bolt in through because the, bra the brake ho uh, pedal housing comes right around it and you can't get this bolt in. So just put this crank on assembly on, pull this shaft, this bolt out because that goes to your brake pedal or to the bracket. So pull that out and then you can slip it through the hole and trust me you're going to uh, thank me for that uh, suggestion. As you'll see now the booster is installed. It fits up against the firewall nice. Um, obviously I got to move hoses and the wires and everything but this is just a test fit. But um, it now fits good. Uh, so now it's just to go back inside, bolt it up, hook the linkage up and uh, this part of it will be done. And then I'll just work on the outside, getting the massive cylinder lines and the, and the proportion valve and everything on this side of it done. So, but uh, actually pretty easy once I got uh, going, just enlarge that hole and make sure that booster fits. Uh, so, so far so good. All right, so now we have the uh, master cylinder installed. Uh, this is the cylinder that's a match it came as a match set with the booster, so hopefully everything's going to work properly. Um, comes, it's a nice looking one. It's powder coated, and in the uh, even the lid, uh, it's blacked out. I'm not sure if I like that. If I'm going to swap it out with the original one, it's a, uh, I believe it's silver on the top and silver bracket. Um, I don't know. It may grow on me, but uh, we'll see. But it's been bench bled. It's full of fluid now, uh, silicone dot five fluid, and. Um, 
So we're ready to go. So the only thing now is we have to install the lines, proportion valves, and work on through the bottom side of it and uh, complete it up. And then we'll bleed everything out and hopefully the, we should be in good shape. Well, there you go. Uh, the booster went in pretty easy. Just enlarge that hole and it slipped right in. So no problem at all. So I think that's gonna be it for part one. It's just gonna be a pretty long video. So I'm gonna break it up in a few parts make it a little easier for viewing. Uh, so please uh, hit like and subscribe and uh, that way you'll get to see the other parts. Uh, we're gonna move on to hooking up the master cylinder, brake lines, proportion valve and so forth. So we're gonna try to finish this portion of the, uh, pro of the brake project out. So again, thanks for showing up and uh, we'll see you later.